Starship is entering a new era, powered by the Raptor 3 engine, the most advanced version yet. During the scrubbed March 3rd launch attempt, SpaceX and Elon Musk showcased its capabilities, generating considerable excitement about Starship's future. So what makes Raptor 3 so powerful? Let's dive into that in today's episode of Elon Musk 24 Hours. For many of us, the anticipation surrounding Raptor 3's maiden flight rivals, that of an actual Starship launch. Its unveiling last year was nothing short of revolutionary, revealing significant advancements in rocket engine design. Since then, we've eagerly awaited its debut as Starship transitions to the V2 configuration. However, it has yet to be implemented. Prior to the scrubbed launch this past Monday, SpaceX and Elon Musk further intensified the excitement by sharing new details about Raptor 3 during the live stream. The hosts extensively discussed its improvements, including the shedding of unnecessary components, prioritizing rapid and reliable production, and enhancing reusability. SpaceX later reinforced this information with a tweet, Raptor 3 is an unprecedented step forward in rocket engine design, which will help us increase Starship's efficiency and the amount of mass it can deliver to space. Efficiency and mass are two critical factors. Regarding mass, the live stream confirmed that by streamlining the engine and removing the large heavy heat shield, each Raptor 3 is approximately 0.1 metric tons lighter than its Raptor 2 predecessor. Multiply that by 39 engines, 33 on super heavy and six on ship, and the weight savings are substantial. Last year's data already hinted at this, with Raptor 3 weighing in at just 1.525 tons, compared to 2.08 tons for Raptor 1 and 1.63 tons for Raptor 2. Reducing weight optimizes payload capacity and improves flight performance. But there's another implication, removing the heat shield signals a major reliability boost. Earlier Raptor versions had intricate, delicate components prone to failure. Raptor 3 eliminates or consolidates those, giving SpaceX greater confidence in its design. Now let's talk about power. Musk summarized it perfectly. Raptor 3 has almost twice the thrust and much higher reliability than Raptor 1, despite costing about four times less. The improvement in reliability is evident visually, but the increase in thrust is equally impressive. Raptor 3 generates 280 tons of thrust at sea level and 306 tons in vacuum. That's nearly double Raptor 1's 185 tons and significantly stronger than Raptor 2, which produced 230 tons at sea level and 258 tons in vacuum. And this gap is expected to widen. Musk has stated that Raptor 3 or future 3.x versions could reach 300 tons of thrust, pushing Starship's total liftoff thrust beyond 10,000 tons. After Flight 7, he reiterated that reaching 300 tons of thrust will be difficult, but not impossible. Many believe that surpassing 300 tons per engine and 10,000 tons total was something we'd see with Raptor 4, but Raptor 3 is already approaching that milestone. Cost is another game changer. With its design optimization, Raptor 3 costs four times less than Raptor 1 and likely about half the cost of Raptor 2. Fewer small parts, simplified manufacturing steps, and streamlined production all contribute to dramatic cost savings. This isn't just about cutting expenses, it also accelerates production speed. With Raptor 3, SpaceX can build more engines per day, directly supporting their ambitious launch cadence. As Musk stated, a factory that can build one engine per day is fundamentally different from a factory that can build 100 per year. Raptor 3 brings SpaceX closer to that high production goal, ensuring the rapid turnaround required for full reusability. But when will we finally see it fly? It could be sooner than expected. Once Starship fully transitions to the V2 configuration, Raptor 3 will likely come into play. The V2 ship debuted with S-33 in Flight 7, but for Super Heavy, the first V2 could be B-18. Notably, its ring stand has been redesigned, suggesting an upcoming shift. If the launch sequence follows current projections, B-18 could fly on Flight 11, potentially in June, assuming SpaceX maintains its one flight per month pace. If booster reuse strategies come into play, similar to reusing B-14, B-18 might fly on Flight 12, likely in July. This means Raptor 3 could debut by mid-2025, marking a significant step toward achieving Starship's long-term goals. Beyond its first flight, the real test will be reusability. 
Musk has emphasized that full reusability is the key to making Starship economically viable. The ability to reuse engines quickly, without extensive refurbishment, will determine how rapidly SpaceX can scale operations. Raptor 3 was designed with this in mind. If it performs as expected, SpaceX could soon begin landing and reusing Starship stages frequently, a major leap toward making space travel routine. Imagine a future where Starship launches multiple times per month, delivering satellites, cargo, and even humans to orbit and beyond. This is the vision SpaceX is pursuing, and Raptor 3 is the engine that will make it possible. So are you excited to see Raptor 3 in action? Reply with the number 3 in the comment section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey. Before transitioning to Raptor 3, however, the current Raptor 2 remains crucial to SpaceX's ongoing development efforts. Over multiple test flights, Raptor 2 has undergone significant refinements, leading to smoother engine ignition and shutdown sequences. These improvements lay the foundation for future missions that demand a highly flexible and reliable propulsion system. One of the most notable achievements of Raptor 2 has been its demonstrated navigation and landing capabilities. It has played a key role in enabling successful booster landings on the Mechazilla catch arms, widely regarded as one of the most challenging landing methods ever attempted. This precision is essential for rapid reusability, a core goal for Starship as it evolves. Additionally, Raptor 2 has proven its ability to operate in space, including successful relight operations. This is a critical milestone for missions requiring in-orbit refueling or deep space propulsion, such as lunar landings or Mars-bound journeys. These achievements reinforce SpaceX's vision of an interplanetary transport system, and mastering these technologies will be essential before Raptor 3 is fully integrated. However, alongside its successes, Raptor 2 has also experienced several technical challenges that must be addressed before moving to the next iteration. One of the most notorious issues has been fuel leaks, such as the one that affected Ship 34 during Flight 7. SpaceX has since made design changes to address these leaks, and initial results from Flight 8 will indicate progress. However, further refinements will be necessary to ensure absolute reliability in future missions. The effectiveness of these upgrades will be tested in the remaining Raptor 2-powered flights. Each mission provides valuable data that will either lead to continued refinements or accelerate the transition to Raptor 3. SpaceX has already hinted that Raptor 3-3 is being designed as a solution to some of the persistent engine system challenges observed with Raptor 2, particularly fuel management and ignition reliability. So the question remains, how will SpaceX proceed on its journey toward Raptor 3? We'll have to wait and see. Moving on to another significant event, we witnessed an unexpected incident involving a Falcon 9 booster landing. At 9.24 p.m. Eastern on March 2nd, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from SLC-40 to deploy 21 Starlink satellites into orbit. The upper stage completed its burn successfully, and the satellites were deployed as planned. However, just when most people assumed the mission was complete, a problem occurred during the booster landing sequence. Booster B-1086, making its fifth flight, experienced an anomaly while landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship. A fire broke out on the booster's aft section, damaging one of the landing legs. SpaceX later confirmed the details on X, stating, Following the successful landing, an off-nominal fire in the aft end of the rocket damaged one of the booster's landing legs, which resulted in it tipping over. Given these circumstances, the booster was completely lost and cannot be reused. This marks the first Falcon 9 booster loss in about eight months. The last similar event occurred on August 28th of last year, when B-1062 suffered a landing anomaly, burning upon touchdown and flipping over. Following that incident, SpaceX had to pause launches for a few days to investigate. Notably, this isn't the only recent setback for Falcon 9 operations. In addition to the August incident, there were also upper stage anomalies during two Starlink missions in July and Crew-9 in September. These issues prompted further investigations and temporary pauses in launches. Given this latest booster failure, it remains unclear whether a formal mishap investigation will be required. The FAA has not yet issued an official statement regarding the incident. However, one positive takeaway is that this issue did not impact the primary mission objective or public safety. 
SpaceX immediately took proactive steps to analyze the failure, emphasizing their commitment to continuous improvement. Following the incident, SpaceX stated, while disappointing to lose a rocket after a successful mission, the team will use the data to make Falcon even more reliable on ascent and landing. Additionally, Kiko Donchev, Vice President of Launch at SpaceX, reassured the public, stating, Booster 1086 was unfortunately lost last night after a successful landing. Additionally, Kiko Donchev, Vice President of Launch at SpaceX, reassured the public, stating, Booster 1086 was unfortunately lost last night after a successful landing. Every failure is an opportunity to learn. This setback will not only improve the reliability of Falcon 9, but of all vehicles at SpaceX. Despite the setback, there's optimism that SpaceX will swiftly resolve the issue and implement necessary design modifications to prevent similar occurrences in future flights. Looking ahead, the Falcon 9 fleet is scheduled to support numerous high-profile missions in the coming months, making reliability an urgent priority. If a formal investigation is launched, it remains to be seen whether this will impact SpaceX's launch cadence. For now, we can only wait and observe the steps SpaceX will take to address this unexpected issue. Given their track record, it's likely they will rapidly adapt and introduce further enhancements to ensure that Falcon 9 remains one of the most dependable rockets in history. This is Elon Musk 24 hours. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet, so you can stay updated with me on the latest SpaceX developments. Thanks for tuning in, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you as long as you keep looking up.